Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, a podcast focused on holistic health, nutrition, biohacking, and more. I'm your host, Brittany Ford, registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker. During the last 10 years, I've focused on healing my gut and hormonal issues through lifestyle changes, nutrition, and of course, biohacks. And now I teach others to do the same. I'm so excited you're joining me today. So let's dive right in. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. I am super, super excited about this episode. It is so timely. Um, I have Gil Blander on with me. He is the founder and chief scientific officer at Inside Tracker, which is a company that provides health solutions via, via DNA testing, biomarker testing, and biological age testing. And I actually just got my results back a few days ago from doing all of these tests. So we are going to go through some of my results that I have questions about. Um, And so then all of you can kind of get a better understanding of what they do. So Gil, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here, Brittany. Amazing. So I would love for you to take us back and explain how you came up with the idea of Inside Tracker and why you developed it in the first place? That's a great question. Um, so I'm a scientist in background uh, and I done my PhD at the Weizmann Institute of Science and then came here to Boston and spent five years at MIT in the best lab that studied aging uh, in the world. Uh, and the reason that I joined that lab is because I was always fascinated by the aging process. I was trying to stop the clock. I was trying to uh, understand why we, can we live forever. I was trying to see how can we delay the onset of aging-related diseases. And that's why I joined that lab. And uh, when I arrived to MIT, I started to be exposed to the biopharmaceutical uh, high-tech environment of an uh, area that called Kendall Square which is a, a, a square next to MIT that uh, in a one square mile radius around it, you have around 1,000 different uh, companies. Uh, and I started to, to see that uh, actually those companies are doing a lot of uh, very interesting activity that uh, might help uh, uh, the human kind to maybe live uh, longer and uh, be better. Um, and because of that, I, I decided that uh, maybe I can contribute more to humanity if I will move to the industry and start my own company than being a, a professor in the academia. So I left MIT after five years and uh, joined a company that uh, done some uh, uh, system biology. And at that company, I came with the idea of Insta Tracker together with two other scientists. And the idea is very simple. Um, we, uh, all of us are a bit different. So uh, each of us have a, a, a bit different uh, issues. Uh, and if we'll understand what, what are our, our issues uh, and we'll know what are they, we can actually try to then solve those issues. And I really like the analogy of the car. So you take the car every 5,000 miles to the technician. The technician plug the computer into the car. And then the computer telling the technician exactly what are the issues with the car. Uh, Do you need to replace oil, oil filter, uh, battery, and so on? And then the uh, car is good for another 5,000 miles. But then you come and do it again and again and again. And research showed that uh, when we install this uh, routine maintenance, uh, the lifespan of the car increased from around 100,000 miles to around 200,000 miles. So the idea was, let's do the same with our body. But then the question was, how can we know what's happening inside our body? It's not very easy today to uh, plug a computer into your brain. By the way, Brittany, maybe you've done it with one of your endeavors of uh, uh, biohacking, but it's not something that is routinely happen uh, today. Um, So instead of that, we decided, let's uh, uh, plug a needle into our vein, extract a liquid gold that's called blood, and based on that, we'll know what are the issues that you have. Do you have too much uh, 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 glu- uh, glucose or too much cholesterol or too little uh, vitamin D? And uh, based on all of that, let's uh, give recommendation for the user what kind of food that do they should uh, eat, what kind of supplement should they take, what sh- kind of exercise is good for them, and what kind of lifestyle changes should they do in order to optimize their body and hopefully by that live longer, better life. 
I love that. I love how personalized and unique it is. Um, I think like as a society, we're moving closer towards more personalized health in general compared to kind of like this blanket uh, prescription that people have been getting in the past. Um, and your tests help get us there, right? Like you test for, what is it, 43, 45 different biomarkers, and then you can take that data through um, you know, a URL website or through an app and actually apply it to your life and make and take actionable steps. And I think that's just excellent. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we uh, we have a website and the app and the, uh, actually recently we also on top of uh, uh, testing the blood, we added a, a DNA testing a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And very mm-hmm. recently we also added the data from wearables such as a Fitbit, Garmin, and we are working now mm. to an Apple Watch. Um, so then it's allow you to see a holistic view of your body, not only of what's happening inside your body, like uh, the blood, but also what is your potential. Uh, right. Using the DNA, we can tell you, hey, uh, you have a high risk to have high glucose, but let's test your blood and see if really you have high glucose right now. And using the wearable, we can uh, look at your resting heart rate, or deep sleep, or rev sleep. And all of that can give us a better view of uh, what's happening in, inside your body. And then we can give you a more specific uh, recommendation that are very uh, tailored just for you. Right. Yeah, I love that. I love it that it's so holistic in nature because that's so on like biohacking style of way of doing things is it's so holistic. Um, so I definitely resonate with that. So in terms of the results that people get after they do these tests, what are some typical trends that you see? um, And has it changed at all in the past year with the pandemic that's going on? Yeah, definitely. So uh, as you said before, the results are really personalized. So you you can have a person that they have a a low iron. And especially we see that with uh, athletic active people and especially young women. So we see a lot of women that have a, a low a iron and that can compromise their athletic performance, but also compromise their performance because the iron uh, is uh, very important to transfer the, um, the oxygen from their uh, lungs to the muscle and to the brain. So mm-hmm. that's uh, one example. We can see that uh, in a, a, a more uh, a, in another population that are less active, we can see a high level of a lot of uh, metabolic markers such as uh, glucose and uh, cholesterol and uh, uh, inflammation. Uh, we can see um, in uh, other population that are, are really uh, very athletic active, we can see increase of a, a hormone that's called a, a cortisol, which is the stress hormone because they might be uh, stressing their body too much and decrease in a, a, a testosterone which is an uh, hormone, a, a sex hormone that also responsible for of building muscle. Um, so so that, that's just a, a small example, but uh, to answer your question about uh, the effect of last year or specifically COVID, yeah, we have seen a, a, a interesting trends uh, in our population uh, during the COVID time. For example, uh, cortisol, which I mentioned before, which is the stress hormone, we have seen a, a significantly increase in cortisol uh, from mm. 2019 to 2020. Um, another marker that uh, uh, show an interesting result is uh, LDL, uh, which uh, the uh, average level of our population of LDL uh, also uh, increased uh, uh, significantly uh, from 2019 to 2020. And uh, we assume that the reason for that is that uh, uh, people are uh, uh, staying at home and uh, they are stressed or they're eating less healthier food. Uh, in other direction, we've seen that uh, uh, vitamin D, which is uh, very important uh, uh, to build uh, uh, bones, but also muscles and other, but they have been shown to be uh, uh, an important uh, 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 vitamin to maybe uh, decrease the, uh, the outcomes of uh, COVID infection. Uh, so the people uh, got it, and we've seen a significant increase in the level of uh, vitamin D between 2019 and 2020. Um, and another interesting marker is creatine kinase, which is a marker of muscle damage or exercise or overexercise. So uh, because uh, uh, our population uh, or our users had less chance to exercise, we could see that the level of uh, creatine kinase, the average level, 
decreased significantly from 2019 to 2020. Um, so those are an example of uh, markers that uh, basically you can see uh, that uh, COVID had a, a significant effect on uh, our population in uh, 2020. Yeah, I mean, that all makes a lot of sense. And I think everyone has been more stressed lately, um, especially in the beginning of COVID, you know, like last year. Um, I, like, I definitely felt that myself. So it makes sense that that's kind of like the trends that you were seeing as well. Um, and I also think people's diets and nutrition have changed a lot in the last year as well, because, I mean, we're home more, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're cooking any healthier. Maybe we're ordering more food in, or maybe people are healthier. I don't know. I guess it could go either way, but it's a very interesting time, I think, to have a company like yours because you get to experiment and like see all this new data come in and see how, you know, people are really actually doing on a very cellular level. Yeah, and, uh, and I think that uh, you raised a very good point, uh, Brittany, the, uh, what I call the end of one experiment. So um, we can do a lot of experiment on our body. For example, you can come and say, okay, I will go, I'm going and uh, I'm going to fast four days, or I'm going to, I don't know, uh, run a marathon every day in the next month. Uh, so, so that's an interesting experiment, but uh, you need a thermometer to understand, okay, what is the effect of a five-day fast or running marathon every day in a month? And I think that the Instant Tracker can uh, supply a great uh, a thermometer like that because you can get tested before and then do whatever experiment that you want to do and then test after and see the effect of uh, the intervention that you've done. So I think that uh, uh, for a biohacker, uh, Instant Tracker is a, uh, is a great tool and uh, we have uh, a a lot of uh, biohackers that actually using Insta Tracker exactly for that to see, okay, uh, I fasted five days. What happened to my uh, uh, metabolic marker? What happened for my uh, other markers? And and then based on that, you you can decide whether a, a specific diet like uh, go vegan or uh, go paleo, and then see whether uh, it's good for you or not. It's very hard to know, and each of us is unique. So uh, N of one experiment will allow you to understand what is good for you and what is not. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I can't wait to actually do my test again in, I think it's three months, I think is the recommendation. Um, and just to kind of like take some of the recommendations on the app and on the website and see how it changes things, like see what it actually does. Um, so in terms of biological age, now, this is something that I think has become very trendy in the last year. Um, at least in the biohacking space. And I think it's becoming more mainstream. So I would love for you to kind of explain what this means and how you actually test for this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. The biological age become more and more interesting and more and more exciting. Uh, there are a few different kinds of uh, biological age. Uh, I think the, maybe the most famous uh, one is uh, what we call the Horvath clock. Uh, which is uh, basically biological age based on a, a modification on your uh, DNA. And it has been shown actually to be uh, extremely accurate. So uh, it's, uh, it can uh, show you in a, a very strong statistic what is uh, uh, your uh, biological age. Uh, the drawback of the, this uh, biological age is that it's uh, not responsive to lifestyle. So basically, yeah, you'll know that, uh, I don't know, let's say that you are uh, someone is 40 and his uh, biological age is 42. There is not a lot of way to modify it because it's uh, really wow. on your genetics and it's uh, very hard to modify. And actually, we are uh, looking into a way to build a, a Horvath clock that is uh, lifestyle uh, uh, responsive. So, mm -hmm. so that's one example. Another example is what we build, which is a biological age based on your blood biomarkers. So we built a, a few version of that. The version one was uh, based on a peer-reviewed scientific publication that uh, uh, we uh, built in uh, 2015. And at that, uh, at that st uh, stage, we had five blood biomarkers and a couple of uh, physiological markers that allow us to give you the biological age. It was a, a, a breakthrough at that time, and uh, it was uh, uh, very exciting. But it was built mainly uh, based on the peer-reviewed scientific publication and I, as I assume that you know, uh, um, the majority of the publications are done on a sick population. So it wasn't a, a good resemble of uh, our population that are mainly 
uh, uh, healthy and uh, include biohackers and the uh, executive and the uh, and the uh, uh, athletic active population. Um, so we decided to use our data that now we have a pretty big data and basically uh, build a regression line. And regression line is basically try to understand how uh, uh, each person in each age look like for a specific marker and see whether the, uh, the line is going up or down with age. And we done it for male and female uh, separately. And then we can know if you, if you are above the line and uh, the line is going up, that's a, a meaning that you are older for this specific marker. If you are below the line and the, a, a, and the line is going up, you are younger. So then we can calculate the, a, a, the inner edge for each marker. And uh, currently we have around 18 markers that uh, uh, related to that. Then we combine all of that together and giving you what is your inner edge. What is nice about it is that then you know exactly what are the reasons that you are older or younger. And then you can uh, uh, use our recommendation to try to modulate it and uh, decrease your inner edge. Um, so, so that's the inner edge in a, in a nutshell. Uh, uh, it's very popular uh, by our users. And uh, I think that, again, for someone that's doing biohacking instead, someone that doesn't like uh, to get geeky and go into uh, the nuts and bullets of every biomarker, he can have one number that he can come and say, hey, I'm trying to beat this number and I'm trying to beat my uh, chronological age by my uh, inner range. Right. Um, yeah, I find it so fascinating uh, as a biohacker. I'm also a nutritionist, so um, it intrigues me just thinking about, you know, how does biohacking impact biological age? How does nutrition impact it? Um, and so what are the typical results that people get? Like, is it around their age or, you know, with COVID, is it a bit higher now because people are more stressed? Like, what are you, what are you really seeing? Yeah, so, so that's a good question. So um, we, we are, uh, as I said, we are looking at uh, 18 uh, or so blood biomarkers. And uh, um, each person, when he receives the result, can uh, have his, uh, obviously receive his uh, uh, biological age, but also he receive what is the level that he can be the youngest. So what, what is uh, basically the side of the court? What is the youngest that he can be and what is the oldest that he can be? Um, and then he, he can see uh, what is his uh, chronological age and what is his uh, biological age. So uh, for me, for example, I can be around uh, 15 years younger than my uh, chronological age, but I can also be uh, around 11 years older than my chronological age. And currently my uh, inner age is uh, uh, seven years or so younger than my uh, uh, chronological age. But it's changing with time. And I actually done the test uh, I don't know, 20 times. Uh, so when you do it a lot, you can start seeing a graph of a, a line that's showing whether uh, you are beating your chronological age because the chronological age is going up all the time. Um, mm -hmm. So can you beat it uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the trend or are you, going, are you going in the wrong direction? But also giving you a very specific po uh, data about each point. So it's uh, really exciting to see that. And uh, basically, uh, it's easier to look at that than, to, uh, than looking at all the biomarkers, which might be a, a bit complex for a, 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 a not a, a, a scientific person. Yeah, yeah, totally. So why is there a limit on how young or old you can be biologically? Like why, why are there parameters like that? Um, be, because we, uh, it's, it's based on the statistic that uh, we calculated and uh, also um, we are also taking into account what is the uh, lifespan that uh, uh, people can reach. So basically, it, it, it doesn't make sense to come to someone and say, hey, you, your uh, biological age or your inner age is 150, because it's not something that is uh, realistic. Maybe right, the statistic right. will say that it's possible, but uh, it's not possible. Uh, about, it's not biological possible. So we are taking into account all of that and basically coming with something that is uh, not only statistically uh, true, but also uh, biologically true. Okay, cool. That makes sense. So so my results, so I'm 27. Um, my results said I was 19. And I was actually so shocked by this because I thought I was going to be older. Like I just figured with being an entrepreneur and um, 
COVID and life, like I, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm probably aging faster. Um, but I was really surprised. And so my results say that I have five biomarkers that are raising my age. Um, and I have nine that are lowering it. Okay. And the youngest that I can be biologically is 18. Um, and the oldest I could be is 37. So my range is actually quite tighter than the range that you have. Yeah, because, because uh, you are younger. So it doesn't make sense for us. As I said, you cannot be 150, but also it doesn't make sense to say that you are 16. So basically, we, we added some barrier not to go too extreme. So in the lower range for you, 18 is uh, uh, basically the, the minimum. Uh, and wow. then uh, you said that it's a uh, 30 something. That's, uh, it's based on the algorithm. So I can look into that and try to understand why. But uh, it could be that for some people, the ranges are uh, uh, the best and the worst can be a bit different than what I see. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Um, and it's interesting when you go through this report, because when you look at the biomarkers that dictate your age, it says specifically how much it is making you older or how much it is making you younger. So, you know, for example, one of mine is monocytes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's making me older by 0 0.6 years. And then you can click like learn more and it pops up and has a graph of what's average for people my age uh, chronologically and describes it. And I think that's so cool to actually get more information, but also just to understand it better and understand where other people are who are similar to me. Yeah, the, yeah, I, I completely agree with you, and uh, that's why we 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 try to do it like that because a lot of uh, um, um, scores that uh, maybe you can find uh, in the market are more like a black box. So they are uh, saying, "Hey, your uh, if we are taking uh, talking about age, you are uh, uh, your uh, chronological age is forty, but you are fifty. And, but there is not explanation and the user cannot understand why. So we are trying to allow you to drill down and then understand, hey, that's the effect of, in your example, a monocyte is making you a bit older. Uh, you can see the graph and uh, uh, if uh, applicable, you can even see some recommendation. What should you do in order to improve that marker? I'm going to let you just sit on that for a moment while I talk to you about MFEs. So if you've been following me online, you know that this is my female EMF protecting underwear that's coming out very soon. Um, and we're opening for pre-orders. And it's been very interesting to start to hear feedback and kind of get some inspiration as well from uh, people who follow us online and people who email me in as well from the podcast. So the wait list is still open. Um, if you want to join that, those people will be the first to know when they drop and also will get a extra discount. And they, yeah, they're coming out soon. Um, the pre-orders will be at a, you know, lower rate than they will be, um, when we're just like fully functioning and that's just to really hear feedback and, and test the market and see what you like and where we can improve. So I highly suggest you get on the wait list. So you're the first to know and look out for M fees. Um, and if you're not following us on social media, please do so. You can follow us on Instagram at M fees and co. That is our user handle. Um, amazing. And enjoy the rest of this episode. Yeah. So that was going to be my next question is like, with this age, like what are the biggest things that impact it? Like I know you test for, you know, 14 different biomarkers here, but without specifically going into them, is it nutrition? Is it lifestyle? Like really what, what do you recommend and, and what really impacts it? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. So for some, a, a marker is a, definitely a, a nutrition. Uh, uh, I can say that a, a but it, it's, again, it depends what is the reason that you have it uh, uh, out of the normal. But uh, a lot of the metabolic-related markers, uh, 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 changing nutrition and also changing uh, exercise can uh, uh, significantly improve it. But marker like uh, vitamin D, it's very hard to improve it via nutrition. So uh, in that case, supplement will do uh, uh, the best solution for, for that. Um, and there are uh, uh, some other markers. Uh, uh, such as uh, 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 um, testosterone, that uh, it's uh, mainly uh, uh, exercise. So 
Uh, we see a lot of people, especially uh, heavy athletic active, that their testosterone is low because they are exercising too much. While uh, for other uh, people, testosterone is low because they are not exercising at all. Now you look at other marker uh, that we discussed uh, before, that is a uh, cortisol. So that's the stress hormone. So a lot of that is because we are uh, too stressful, as you said. Uh, COVID definitely haven't made us uh, uh, happier and uh, less stressful. So, uh, so, so for each marker, you can have different reasons. Uh, and it's also uh, depending on your uh, situation, depending on what is your, uh, uh, are you uh, uh, too heavy or are you too light? Uh, uh, are you young or old? Are you Caucasian or African-American? Uh, are you an alcohol drinker or not? So we are taking into account all of that and then coming with the best recommendation for you. Great. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and one of the, the results I actually wanted to talk to you about was testosterone and cortisol. So in, and now this is like separate from the age test. Um, so mine came back and said my testosterone is normal and my cortisol is normal. But you guys create this uh, ratio of testosterone to cortisol, and it says it's low. So I'm so interested to like learn more about that because I've never, um, I've never heard of cortisol and testosterone being compared to each other. So I'm just curious, like, what is going on there? Yeah, it's a great question. So the ratio between uh, testosterone to cortisol is basically a, a nice ratio to uh, to understand whether you are building muscle or breaking muscle. And let me explain it. So uh, testosterone is, uh, other of being a, a sex hormone, is also an hormone that is uh, 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 important for building muscle. Basically, it's uh, uh, allowing the, the body to build muscle. So it is important that it will be high, but not too high, obviously. Uh, and then cortisol is the uh, stress hormone. And when it's uh, high, uh, uh, one of the effects of that is that the, mass, the body breaks muscle. And the reason for that is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, thousands of years ago when bear was running after us and we had to climb on a, a tree, uh, the body uh, needed to uh, provide a lot of energy for us to do that. And what cortisol is doing is basically taking uh, anything that it can do and b- breaking it to, to allow us to have energy. So basically, if you have a chronic level of high cortisol, you are uh, supposed to break muscle. So because of that, we are looking at the, the, the testosterone to cortisol ratio, whether your body is currently building muscles or breaking muscle. Mm. Okay. And so because my ratio is lower than the optimal range that you have indicated here, um, that just means that I am like overtraining and overstressed, I guess? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I need to look at, uh, at, at your result, which I don't have in front of me. But okay. it could be, yes. That, so even if you are uh, optimizing both of them, uh, in order to uh, be the optimal for a, a, a testosterone to cortisol ratio, uh, your uh, testosterone should be uh, very high in, still in your mm-hmm. optimal range and your cortisol uh, should be very low still in the optimal range. So it could be that it's a bit, uh, uh, it's not there yet and because of that it's not uh, optimal. But mm-hmm. because your uh, testosterone and cortisol are in the optimal range, I, I wouldn't be worried about that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm quite, a, you know, conscious of my hormones as a female. So it's very interesting. And Something I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you will know the answer to this, but when I took this test, um, I was actually on my period, like I was menstruating. So I noticed that like some of the results were saying like low iron and that type of thing. So does the, like for females, does it matter when you take this test with your cycle? Like, can it really impact the results that much? Yeah, definitely. So uh, definitely the cycle can uh, influence the uh... A, a, a lot of those markers and and that's why uh, when you look at uh, a lot of uh, clinical trials or uh, uh, experiment in the lab uh, the majority of them are done on uh, males because they are much mm-hmm. simpler uh, yeah. women are much more complex uh, yeah. Uh, yeah it's uh, it's uh, it's sad to, to say but that's why the, there is some uh, discrimination for women in the experiment and a lot of the drug are tested more on males um, and yeah the, the best is a uh, uh, 
to try to uh, do those tests uh, and not during the, the cycle. But uh, the most important point is that uh, uh, you uh, um, created a, a baseline. And mm-hmm. And your baseline is, and, and you should know it, I know it's uh, the first day, the second day, the, the third day of the cycle. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, what it, what I would recommend you to do from now and on, try to next time to do the, the test list at the same day. And okay. then uh, basically uh, it's less important because then you compare, the comparison is what is important. And you compare the uh, uh, what happened a few months ago to now, but you take uh, the cycle out of the equation. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Does the cycle or does your cycle impact your biological age? Like when you do that test as well? Uh, it, it could because there are uh, some markers. I, I know that, uh, uh, for example, some of the inflammation markers are, uh, uh, can go up. Uh, so so it, it, it can do that. Again, I'm not uh, uh, too worried about it. I don't think that it will be very significant, but uh, hmm. because we are not measuring uh, uh, a female sex hormones that they are really jumping during uh, that process, but some of the marker can change the bit uh, uh, during the, the during the cycle. So that's definitely can influence the uh, um, the level of the uh, uh, inner age, but it won't be significant. Right. So how easy is it to alter your age? Like, say you get your results back and you know you're a few years older, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna spend some time. I'm gonna work on this. And I'm going to retest in three months. Like, can you actually make a significant difference in your biological age within that time frame? Yeah, you can. And again, it depends what uh, uh, biomarkers are uh, you are trying to modulate, uh, mm-hmm. and also what is your uh, uh, condition. So, if you are someone like you and you said that you're already athletic active and uh, you're already doing a lot of the right thing, it will be. And uh, let's assume that your glucose or the LDL is high it will be harder for you to modulate it because you're already doing a lot of the right thing. But if you are uh, someone that is uh, obese and is uh, 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 and, uh, a couch potato and you are not, uh, uh, and your glucose and uh, uh, LDL are high, it will be much easier for you to change it because you are not doing uh, anything that is right. And then just by losing some weight and exercising, you can significantly decrease it. Um, mm. So uh, the answer is it's de- it's depend on the uh, on the markers that are uh, uh, are not uh, uh, optimized. Some of them are uh, much easier to modulate. Some of them are uh, a bit harder to modulate. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and that's really good to know because I'm just like wondering when I retest, like what what I can change. Um, and yeah, like you said, I've, I've done a lot of the, the big things, the low hanging fruit already. So exactly. That's very interesting. Um, I did want to talk about HDL. So my results came back, um, just like as a preference, like I, I eat basically paleo kind of keto. Um, but, and I've been eating like that for like 10, 11 years, basically it's a very long time. Um, so I was interested to get my um, results back about my cholesterol. So my results said that I have high HDL, high total cholesterol, but normal LDL and normal triglycerides. So what does that mean? I mean, I need to go back to my textbooks and go through this, but like, what do you think about that? So you said that you have a high HDL, correct? Yeah, high HDL. Um, normal LDL and high total cholesterol. Yeah, yeah. So uh, IHDL is not a, 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 is not a, a big problem, and usually women uh, have a higher HDL for male, and uh, I'm not sure that we know why, but uh, hmm. a, 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 we see a, a big difference between males and females in a, a HDL, and I think that it's well known in the scientific publication. Uh, so if your HDL is uh, uh, high, and again, uh, uh, you don't need to tell me the number and I don't want to ask, but if it's not uh, crazy high, uh, uh, it's, not, it's not a problem. Um, it sounds like your LDL is, uh, um, is uh, in the optimal range, uh, as you told me, and then the total cholesterol is a bit high. So I wouldn't worry about it at all uh, because okay. the, basically the total cholesterol is uh, 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 in a formula that uh, combined the 
HDL and LDL together and uh, in, inside the formula. So I wouldn't worry about uh, uh, you having uh, uh, high uh, uh, total cholesterol if your uh, LDL is uh, uh, good and the, H- uh, and the HDL is a bit high. I, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell you my results. So my LDL is 55 milligrams. Mm-hmm. Um, my HDL is 108. Um, my triglycerides is 42. And my total cholesterol is 172. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so your LD, uh, HDL is uh, uh, very high. Uh, 108, yeah. Yeah, 108 is like, uh, yeah, it's uh, 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 very high. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, I, I don't think that it's, uh, 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 it's uh, uh, too bad. And uh, I would uh, uh, test again and see where it is. But uh, it's okay. definitely one of the highest number that uh, I, I, I have seen. Uh, the LDL is great. It's very low. It's like, uh, again, it's, it's uh, pretty impressive to have such a, a low LDL. And can you say again, what is your triglyceride? Triglyceride is 42. Yeah, it's also very low, which is great. Um, so, um, so I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't uh, uh, worry about that uh, uh, too much. Uh, there is no... Uh, um, we we are uh, saying that uh, uh, the level of the LDL is uh, out of you are out of the optimal, but you are not out of the normal for HDL as much as I, uh, I understand. So um, um, I, I think that it's something genetics, and it will be interesting. I don't know if you've done uh, the genetic testing with us, or have you done it uh, in, with different companies? It will be interesting to see what is your uh, uh, genetic saying about your HDL. Uh, hmm. and uh, and see uh, by that it, uh, it might be that genetically some people have a higher level of uh, hdl yeah i have had my genes done uh last summer with it with a different company before i knew about you guys um so i'm definitely which, gonna look in look into that yeah which company is it it's called dna power it's a okay. vancouver canadian company okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm I'm asking because we have an integration that if you done twenty three and me or ancestry, mm. you can upload the result. But we don't have a, a a way to do that with that company. Yeah. 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 It's it's interesting because I just yeah, like you said, like my LDL triglycerides is is pretty good. Total cholesterol is like it's a bit. Uh, is it high? Yeah, it's a bit high. But my HDL so interesting. So I'm definitely going to go and research that after this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, the biggest thing that came back that's like red and like worrisome according to my results is my vitamin D levels. Okay. Um, so my vitamin D levels are actually very high and I, like I take a vitamin D supplement. So that is probably why. Um, so it's sitting at 103 nanograms. So yeah. it's way, <laughs> it's too high. <laughs> Yeah, so, so how much, uh, uh, what is the dose that uh, you are consuming of vitamin D? Do you remember? Yeah, so, I mean, it's so in Vancouver in winter, we don't yeah. get a lot of sun. So I have been taking vitamin D for a long time. Um, and I'll take between, you know, 3,000 IUs to 5,000 IUs. Um, and definitely, yeah, just to support mood and support hormone function yeah. and everything else. Um but I was surprised to see it come back so high, even with the lack of sunlight that I've been getting over the past winter. Yeah, no, uh, and uh, and it's the same uh, story. It could be that uh, genetically you are a, a very good absorber of uh, vitamin D from uh, the supplement or from the food. So what I would recommend is stop taking vitamin D and test again, as you said, in a few months and see if... Uh, if you need it, then take it. But uh, yeah, uh, above 100 is a bit too high, and I would uh, uh, I wouldn't continue to take the supplement in that case. Yeah, yeah, that was my plan. Um, I was just, you know, you hear so much about taking vitamin D, especially yeah. with COVID now. So I'm always like every day, like take it, take it, take it. But now it's so interesting that like I've built up like quite a lot of stores of it. So. Um, yeah, I'll definitely like wean off of it. And now our days are getting longer too, and we're getting more sun. So I definitely don't need it as much. Um, and the other one that was high was my vitamin B12, um, which was a supplement I was also taking. So, yeah. <laughs> um, 
and that was sitting at 837. Okay. Um, which yeah. is, yeah. Yeah. So uh, first I want to uh, still go back to the vitamin D. And I mm -hmm. think that that's a great example uh, why uh, testing is so important. Uh, yeah. Because uh, uh, it could be that, uh, I don't know, for 90% of the population, uh, taking a lot of vitamin D might be good, but for you, it's too much. Um, and that's why it's, uh, yeah, take vitamin D, but also test and be sure that you are not too much or you are not too low. And I, a lot of time I have the problem of too low. Uh, my body is not processing vitamin D as good as your body. So I'm taking a, a 5,000 IU a, almost every day and my level is, a, I don't know, in the 40s. Now for vitamin B12, so yeah. vitamin B12, we see that's a, for me is the indicator of a over supplement, a supplementing. Mm -hmm. So the, we see a, in a population, the, and today there are a lot of people that are taking a lot of supplement and the more the merrier. <laughs> and it's not the case. And especially if you take a multivitamin or drinking energy drink or, a, or other, a, a, a lot of the supplements have a lot of vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. And but they have also a lot of other things, so uh, so, so we, we need to be careful and we we shouldn't uh, overtake it because uh, uh, there are some uh, uh, side effects uh, of uh, 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 taking too much a bit wealth as well. And uh, I uh, I will recommend you also to stop taking it and then uh, test again in a few months and see. Maybe you don't need any vitamin B12, uh, but maybe you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was my plan. Um, yeah, I just, again, it, you know, I've been taking vitamin Bs, like B vitamins on and off for so long. Um, and as a nutritionist, like I know how important it is because a lot of people don't get enough and it's depleted very rapidly in the body from right. stress and from poor gut health and these other issues. Yes. Um, but yeah, like you said, like that's why you get tested for these things because you could be taking supplements that you do not need to be taking at all. Um, and how else would you know unless you actually got a like blood test done that shows you what is going on? Exactly. Yeah. Um, but honestly, like in total, I'm really, really happy with my results. So like 43 of my results are optimized. And then there's about five that I need to work on. Um, and is that normal? Like, is it typically like, like that? Like about a handful of the biomarkers people need to work on and then everything else is, is good? No, I, I think that uh, I don't have the statistic in front of me, but uh, I think that, again, I haven't seen your result, but uh, usually you have much more issues than what you have. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you are either lucky or you are a hard worker or maybe you are both. Uh, because people that uh, usually start uh, working with us, we see much more issues than what uh, uh, you identified. Yeah, I think it's. I think when you're a biohacker, you're just very aware of things yeah. <laughs> that impact your health. Um, but this has been so great. Thank you so much for coming on. How can people connect with you? And if they want to get these tests themselves, where can they go? Yeah, that's a, a great question. So you can find all the information at insidetracker.com. Um, and uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, have you as a part of our uh, ecosystem. We are growing rapidly and uh, uh, we love uh, the biohackers. Uh, we uh, uh, support these uh, uh, organizations uh, 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 for a long time. We are a part of the quantified self community. I've been in a few quantified self uh, uh, events and we are uh, also working with uh, a lot of biohackers and we think that uh, uh, you are the leaders and uh, uh, everyone will follow you so we really like to work with the uh, biohackers so come to us and we'll uh, love to have you part of our uh, um, ecosystem amazing so i'm going to put all those links in the show notes um so people can find you and and find Inside Tracker and get tested so they can understand their health better. Um, yeah, thanks again for coming on and I learned so much. This was really awesome. Thank you, Brinti. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, feel free to screenshot this episode and tag me if you'd like me to respond. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have a question about your health, my DMs are always open and I'm currently taking new clients. Thanks and see you next time.